Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2017. They're one of my go-to exchanges. You can buy, sell, trade crypto, as well as precious metals and equities. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and are available in 150 countries. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. All right, my friends, it was a rough day for the crypto market. Boy, do I have a lot to share with you, and it's not good news. But it's news you should know about because we need to prepare, we need to anticipate what's going to happen and have our strategies in line with what may potentially happen. So first, I think many of you heard about this, Silvergate Capital, the Silvergate Bank, they are shutting down operations and liquidating the bank. Um, obviously, a big hit. Silvergate was not a crypto-specific bank, but they were uh, a big provider of financial services to a lot of crypto companies. And of course, uh, they took a hard hit with all the collapses last year, but part of the problem was when uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren was out there uh, putting out a lot of FUD, sending out letters, so essentially causing a bank run. And of course, she did her victory lap you know, on this news. She tweeted out, as the bank of choice for crypto, Silvergate Bank's failure is disappointing but predictable. I warned of Silvergate's risky, if not illegal, activity and identified severe due diligence failures. Now customers must be made whole and regulators should step in against crypto risk. Now, clearly, she's being dis disingenuous, right? Clearly trying to say, oh, this was predictable. No, it wasn't. What was predictable is what you did in causing the bank run uh, because there was other things happening with Silvergate as a fractional reserve bank and so forth. So a lot of folks in the industry weighed in on her comments. Uh, Miles Jennings, he tweeted out here, he's the um, head of, uh, he's GC and head of decentralization at A16Z Crypto. He said, how disgraceful. A US senator essentially bragging about the end result of a bank run that she helped cause. Uh, Ryan Selkis of Masari said, it's market manipulation when you're a hedge fund working with short sellers to defame and destroy a company. It is not market manipulation when you're a sitting senator doing that. So Elizabeth Warren, once again, sending out tweets and all types of letters about Silvergate, um, uh, trying to paint Silvergate in a negative light, uh, essentially contributing to the bank run. Now, uh, I tweeted out, guys, that it wouldn't surprise me if Gary Genser and Elizabeth Warren, who are two peas in a pod, right, very close. They've been working together. Elizabeth Warren's been sending Gary questions uh, ahead of hearings. So they are both trying to slow crypto down and, and their best pals. Well, I said it wouldn't surprise me if they are working with crypto skeptics to short crypto companies and assets. Uh, could certainly be working with Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, George Soros, et cetera. And we know George Soros, um, and this was revealed just earlier, uh, uh, excuse me, last month, February 14, 2023, that he has been shorting uh, macro, excuse me, marathon digital micro strategy and Silvergate Bank. And of course, uh, we know that Gary Genser did scrub some meetings from his calendar that he had with George Soros. So make make of it what you want with that information, but I'm a big believer where there's smoke, there's fire, and uh, I, I, these influential funds and big time investors, uh, you know, we know how DC runs, guys, right? Uh, it's it's legalized bribery, the, the campaign donations and so forth to get things done in your favor, and and Soros and these other guys, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger. They're part of the old guard and they're getting disrupted. So, you know, once again, make of it what you feel, but with this information. So let's move ahead here. Uh, Caitlin Long also weighed in on this situation with Silvergate. She said, um, wasn't the Fed Silvergate's regulator? Question mark. The banks we regulate in contrast are well protected from bank runs through a robust array of supervisory requirements. This is some Fed Chair Vice uh Fed Vice Chair Supervision Michael Barr speaking this morning. So 
uh, Caitlin clearly calling out the hypocrisy and double standard here. And she also responded to Senator Sherrod Brown, who was trying to make light of Silvergate's uh, bankruptcy or you know decision to liquidate. She said, Senator Sherrod Brown, you're wrong that crypto triggered Silvergate's issue. What did it was the $13.3 billion in demand deposits that this depositors could withdraw in minutes, but only $1.4 billion of cash. Had Silvergate held $13.3 billion of cash, the bank run wouldn't have impaired its capital, not a crypto problem. So this goes back to fractional reserve banking, right? Um, so this is not a crypto specific issue. The reason uh, you know, it is being reported via crypto is because once again, Silvergate was helping to bank a lot of crypto companies, but that had nothing to do with the cash they had on on their balance sheet. Um, and then, you know, she provided Silvergate's uh, numbers and so on and so forth. And she said, when a bank with highly volatile deposits makes a levered investment in 10-year bonds into a Fed tightening cycle, what happens when a bank run hits is predictable? Liquidate those bonds at a loss impairing the bank's capital. It's an indictment against fractional reserve banking. She's absolutely right. So that's what's at play here, guys. This is why you, you can't just read headlines. You have to go into the details. And um, it, what we see, and, and attorney John Deaton actually weighed in on this. He said, FTX and Silvergate will 100% con be conflated by Gary Genser, Elizabeth Warren, and others to push their anti-crypto agenda. Warren has already made a despicable comment regarding Silvergate, and she isn't letting the truth get in the way of her narrative. Stand by to puke as they gaslight the American people. Well said. That is exactly what's happening here. So they're going to gaslight. They're going to go around, see, see crypto, that bad stuff. That's what caused Silvergate's collapse. Nope. Uh, did Silvergate take a hit from the from the crypto uh, problems that we had last year? Yes. But that is not what put them out of business. It's their fractional reserve banking um, and the bets they made. And of course, Elizabeth Warren uh, contributing to the bank run. So Nick Carter weighed in on the politicians, you know, using this Silvergate situation for their agenda. He said, politicians are now telling us that because a single bank peaking at $16 billion in assets wound down in an orderly manner, making depositors whole, affecting no one but shareholders, causing no knock on eff um, effects uh, that crypto firms must be shut down uh, or shut out of the banking system. He says here, they cry out, safety and soundness while chipping away at the foundation and act vindicated when the structure starts to crumble. Uh, he, he retweeted Elizabeth Warren. He said, now, as they gleefully dance on the graves of crypto firms, as legal companies struggle to stay banked, I want you to remember that this, what this feels like. So when the shoe is on the other foot to show them the same mercy they afforded us, none. Uh, he says here, Silvergate, may well have sealed their own fate, but things certainly wasn't helped by investigations from the DOJ and others, and the FHLB under pressure from Warren and others abruptly recalling their loan. So once again, a lot of these politicians contributed to that bank run, right? Because perception is many times reality. If Elizabeth Warren is sending uh, uh, letters and putting pressure on regulators to go after these folks, it makes you think that something is wrong. Um, but Silvergate, as Nick said, they chose to uh, you know, liquidate and, and close the business. So they didn't go into bankruptcy or anything like that. And, and they made depositors whole. So uh, it's a tough day, my friends. And look, the market took a, a bit of a beating from that. Um, Bitcoin is down. It's at $20,337. And what I'm watching, along with many other folks, is there a break in the support for Bitcoin's retracement, right? I, I share my trading view chart here. We've been following this. It looked like Bitcoin was moving. But of course, if uh, many of you know what I've been saying, a black swan event could change all these scenarios and, and the thesis we formed, right? So this is why you have to look at the bull and the bear scenarios. You have to look at everything holistically, and you can't definitively say, well, everything's going to go down or everything's going to go up. You have to many times just wait and see. And once again, have uh, a plan for different scenarios. And of course, this is a black swan event. It may not be the biggest black swan event, but it, nevertheless, it is. And uh, look, there's also other painful news that just came out this afternoon. So the New York Attorney General is suing KuCoin uh, Exchange 
But in that uh, lawsuit, they're saying Ethereum is a security. This is a big, big one, my friend. So Lathia James said KuCoin lets investors trade popular virtual currencies such as ETH, Luna, and Terra USD. And that her case is among the first by a regulator alleging that ETH is a security. Uh, this is, this is uh, once again, we are in that then they fight you phase. They're going after everything. And when XRP holders were crying about it and screaming from the hills about it to the rest of the industry, guys, the, the, the lawsuit against Ripple was an attack against the entire crypto industry. Bitcoiners, Ethereum folks were making fun of XRP holders. Uh, they were laughing at us and so forth. Now, look what's happening, right? This was an all-out attack on crypto, and they're going after ETH now. Um, and there's just mass confusion in the market because uh, despite what Gary Genser and the New York Attorney General are saying, just recently, CFTC Chair uh, Rostin Benham, he was tripling down on Ether being a commodity and stablecoins also being commodities. And we know Gary wants to make uh, stablecoins uh, securities. So this was a contrast to SEC chairs Gensler's interview in the New York Magazine. Rare, and this is Justin Slaughter, by the way, who tweeted this out. He's policy director of Paradigm. He said, rare to see this level of in interagency disagreement in public. So we have complete confusion in the market right now, right? One regulator saying something, the other saying the other, another thing. The enforcement actions being taken on the fact that ETH is a security here. Boy, what a mess, right, guys? But once again, we are in that then they fight you phase. Everything's on the table. No one's safe right now. Now, let's look at the macro. Does this mean this is the end of crypto or, or uh, you know, we should all close shop and go home? No, 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 no. This is, once again, don't forget, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. My friends, disruptive tech always wins, right? There were people fighting the automobile and fighting electricity and the light bulb and fighting the internet and the disruption it was causing with communication and data and information. And uh, it may take time, you know, they're going to slow us down. They're throwing roadblocks in our way. And, I, I, and as we've talked about, I believe that Gary Genser and many of these folks are slowing crypto down so the incumbents can catch up because they're getting disrupted. Do you think JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, all these banking folks like that people can go create their own uh, tokens, digital assets, and move value outside of them? No, no, that's their business model, right? And that you can go put your money in uh, tokens and stake them and earn a higher yield and interest than what you can get in your savings accounts? Of course, they don't like that. that, that it's It's it would be it's logical, right? It's clear, and they're gonna fight back, and they have the polit many politicians and regulators in their pockets. And I, I I've said it many times. Gary Genser is beholden to these banking folks. He's a puppet for these banks, and he's gonna help them. He's a Goldman Sachs guy, right? It's the revolving door of Wall Street and government. Wall Street and government. He, they just go back and forth, right? And they get they make a lot of money as a result. So. It's pretty painful out there, my friends. And here's another blow. If you think Bitcoin is out of the woods, it's not. Biden administration proposes 30% tax on electricity used for Bitcoin and crypto mining. This is being reported by the New York Times. Here's a quote. It's hindering the transition to a low emission energy future, the White House says. So they're going after everything. Every single thing they are going after. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see what Bitcoin maximalists like uh, Michael Saylor and Max Kaiser are going to say. Those two asshats have been trying to fight and trying to lobby uh, Gary Genser to make everything else except Bitcoin a security. But in one way or the other, you try to you know deal with these people on the government it, 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 they don't care uh about max kaiser and and uh michael saylor they're going to look to get their pound of flesh wherever whether it's from bitcoin or ethereum or xrp or whatever it may be and uh it's better that max kaiser and, and these guys sailor work with the entire crypto community to uh you know unite and it's not bitcoin and everything else is to keep but rather crypto but you know, you're still going to have your religious folks. Um, some some people are here for a religion, I think, the way they get, um, you know, in, into their assets and they, they, they want to make everything get pushed to the side, but instead of allowing the free market, right, guys? Now, 
Here's an interesting statement from Europe's biggest asset manager, $2 trillion Amundi. If inflation remains above target, Bitcoin's limited supply may start to attract more attention. So what we're seeing is outside of the United States, there's more clarity, there's more activity, more investment starting to happen now. Um, and it sucks that we here are, are in that then they fight you phase, right? Um, here's an ex another example. Germany, digital collectible NFTs are not securities. NFTs are also not classified as investments, but that could change too. But here you see Germany and these folks, they're being very clear. What's a security? What's not? Here's the guidelines. Um, most cryptocurrencies are virtual currencies in, in these other parts of the world. Um, here in the United States, once again, Gary's trying to make everything a security. Now, uh, speaking of Gary Genser, today he tweeted out, um, uh, an op-ed he did um, on the hill.com or the magazine or whatever you want to call it. And Ron Hammond of the Blockchain Association retweeted uh, Gary's tweet here and said, it is pretty rare for a regulator to pen an op-ed and pur purposely drop it in an hour before the financial committee hearing on the administration's approach to crypto. Reminds me of Democrat Richie Torres' statement on Genser a few months ago, a quote, a politician pretending to be a regulator. Um, so we need Congress to act. This the, the way to stop this is for Congress to act, to come together, Democrats and Republicans, because Gary is out of control. Um, we also got some uh, folks correcting Gary Genser. So uh, Cody Carbone of the Chamber of Digital Commerce he responded to some statements Gary Genser made. Uh, Genser rejects crypto's threat to go overseas. Uh, quote from Gary is, we lose more if investors get harmed here. He said, it's a basic bargain in finance. If you want to raise money from the public, disclose certain facts and figures. Well, um, Cody Carbone said, Genser is incorrect in his statements. One, MICA, which is the um, regulatory framework in overseas, does cover does cover Bitcoin under its definition of a crypto asset. Two, U.S. investors are already getting harmed because they're seeking out offshore opportunities to invest, i.e. FTX. So remember, FTX collapsed right under Gary's nose. Uh, Gary was meeting with Sam Beckman-Fried and the other FTX officials. And Gary did not stop Celsius. He did not stop Terra Luna. He did not stop Voyager. He did not stop Three Hours Capital, right? But he did stop Kim Kardashian. Thanks, thanks a lot, Gary. Uh, yeah, Kim Kardashian is the one who lost billions of dollars. Kim Kardashian was the one who was in your office. No, no, that was actually Sam Bankman Freed. Um, so Gary, you know, same old talking points. He's just lying. He's not providing any clarity. But once again, his job is to slow this thing down. You know, just muck up the entire process and the industry, cause confusion, so his banking buddies can come in, swoop in, and uh, take over. Now, there's also reports here that Gary Genser has apparently, uh, he has multiple SEC email accounts that he uses. Uh, Eleanor Tourette of Fox Business said, why would he need to do this? I've reached out to the SEC for a comment. So Gary, of course, um, you know, continues his shady activity. This is what we're dealing with here, my friends. Corruption, nonsense, uh, hypocrisy, and uh, he needs to be kicked out of office. All right, guys. Once again, not good news, but news you should know about. Uh, it's pretty tough out there. Uh, once again, I am bullish long term, but right now things are tough. I think the Silvergate situation is a black swan event. We could see Bitcoin's price just roll over, maybe go back down to, I don't know, 17, 18K or lower. I just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and I think Bitcoin's retracement is going to be delayed. I hope I'm wrong, but with what we're seeing right now, the all out attack, the market is, is going to react to that. Um, once again, it's not that crypto is dead or is going to die. That's that's not what's happening here, but we are under attack. Um, but it, this tech will win. Um, in, and they, uh, once again, as history has shown us, disruptive tech always wins. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you all later.